Let's stand to our feet and let's just honor this prophet of God that's come to our church tonight, Brother Richard Roberts. Well, give it to Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you tonight and praise you and give you honor and glory in this place. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And thank you, Lord, that even now as I'm beginning, you're healing someone's right knee. A right knee is being healed. Whoever has pain in your right knee, wave your hand at me. In Jesus' name, pain is leaving someone's right knee right now. And if you'll just begin to jump up and down and hop on that knee, you're going to find the knee is being healed right now. Somebody give praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Wow. Can you say wow? Wow. Say it backwards. Wow. wow. <laughs> God bless you. You can be seated. Pastor Jack, thank you so much for this opportunity to be here tonight and to be in the beautiful metropolis of Houston, where it never gets cold, I live in Dallas, that unfriendly city up north that, you know, that the Texans beat up on this year. And um, on Monday, it was 79. And on Wednesday, it was 25. Glory to God. Let's move to Hawaii. <laughs> Praise God. I'm glad to be here tonight. I ministered this morning. Could you take this down just a little bit? It's a little bit too hot. Thank you. Uh, I was in, uh, I was, I ministered this morning for my longtime friend, Pastor Roy Love over at Praise Chapel on the other side of the state. That's on the other side of Houston, you know, you know, cause you got to go through 14 turnpikes just to get over to this side of town. Yeah, this is the biggest city I've ever seen. I mean, it's huge, but anyway, we had a wonderful service. There were lots and lots of miracles this morning and I've got good news. What he did there, he can do here tonight. Uh, I told Sister Pigeon we're going to do something, Brother, Brother Pigeon, we're going to do something a little different tonight because I know you've been having healing classes and I'm glad because the Bible says that Jesus sent his disciples to preach, teach, and bring healing. Amen. Thank God for the preaching of the word. Yes. Nothing will take the place of the preaching of the word. I love the praise and worship, yes. but the praise and worship is a preamble to prepare you uh, for the preaching of the word because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So thank God for the preaching. Thank God for the teaching of the word. Thank God we have the apostle Paul who taught us how to live our Christian lives. But without the confirmation, without the miracles, you don't have the full gospel. Just preaching and teaching is just two thirds of a gospel. You got to have the preaching and the teaching and the healing to have a full gospel message. Why don't more ministers pray for the sick? Well, I think it's probably because they're intimidated and they are afraid that they might fail. And what would they say if it looked like nothing happened? How could I get myself off the hook, so to say, you know? But when you understand that you are not the healer, when you recognize that it is Jesus who is the healer, that you're not called to do the healing, you're called to pray. Amen. When you realize that the pressure is not on you to do the miracle, then it's easier for you to begin to pray for the sick. And I want to remind you that Jesus did not have 100% success either. There were some places he went where the Bible says he could do no miracles, save he laid his hands on a few and they were healed because of the people's unbelief. So, uh, and people say, well, I look at your dad. Well, Robert, look at all the miracles in his ministry. Well, I remember a lot of people who didn't get healed. And I can remember my father coming home and from some crusade or I was with him in some nation around the world and everyone was talking about all the great miracles and he remembered the ones who, di who didn't appear to be healed. So uh, he probably had as much failure as he had success. 
but people have a tendency to talk more about the success. So I understand that. But, but he understood that he was not the healer. Amen. He was the conduit through which God's power would flow, but it was not his touch that brought the healing. It was God who did the healing. And I've got news. If, uh, if, if the Lord heals people, it's because it's his will. He said in 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Now, when I came up tonight, when Brother Pigeon introduced me, uh, I immediately got a word of knowledge about a knee being healed. Well, that's an operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, the word of knowledge is one of those nine gifts, the word of wisdom. Uh, there's someone right now who has a lost feeling in, in one of your fingers, in your hand right now. I don't know who you are. You've lost feeling. You've had some numbness in your hand. Who are you? Where are you? You've got some numbness in one of your fingers. Where is that person? You've got numbness in your fingers, and the Lord is healing you right now. Now, that's an operation of the word of knowledge. I don't know anything about anybody's fingers. I just know what I feel. And you're being healed just like your other per that woman was getting healed in her knee. Amen. And can you tell the difference in your knee now? Yeah, see, so you jumped up and down on it. And the reason I told you to do that was because the Holy Spirit told me to do that. I don't normally walk up to women and stay, start jumping up and down. <laughs> I just don't normally do that, especially with pink hair. I mean, I just don't do that. <laughs> uh, but when the Lord says it, I have to be obedient. Now, that was an operation of the word of knowledge. A word of knowledge is supernatural information that comes to a believer about a person or a situation where you know something that you could not know by human standards. There's also the word of wisdom, and there is the gift of faith, and there's the gift of prophecy, and there's the gift of working of miracles. And there's the gift of the discerning of spirits and the gift of tongues, which is different than your daily devotional prayer language. And there's the gift of interpretation of tongues, which is also different than just interpreting back your daily prayer language. And then there is, uh, there is the gifts of healing. There are nine of the gifts of healing. And something has begun happening recently in my life. Maybe it happened before and I didn't understand it or I didn't recognize it. But something has been happening through me that has not happened. At least I was not aware that it was happening. And it began happening in earnest several weeks ago. My wife, Lindsay, uh, who is back up at home, had a dream. And in the dream, she saw me standing on a platform and putting out my hands and praying. And people began to get healed without me touching them. And uh, just after that, uh, Brother Pigeon, I was invited by Kenneth Copeland to come and to close out his annual minister's conference, which was just two weeks ago. And on the Thursday night, the closing night, uh, Brother Kenneth asked me to have a healing service. Well, it's something that I'm, I'm very accustomed to and, and very familiar with because I've, I've conducted healing services all over the world, before small crowds, before big crowds, you know. I've, I've ministered to as many as 200,000 in one service. I've seen as many as 25,000 people give their life to the Lord in one service. Wow. I've seen thousands come forward to give healing testimonies in one service. And I've also been in groups of 10, 15, 20, hundreds like tonight where God begins to move. It's not the size of the crowd. Okay, it's the one we're worshiping. So Brother Kenneth introduced me that night and I did exactly what my wife saw in her dream. I stood on the platform and I, I held out my hands and I began to pray and at least 400 people testified of being healed that night. Now, you have to know, I grew up under the laying on of hands ministry. My father, Oral Roberts, how many have heard of Oral Roberts? Uh, do you think I look like him? Do you? Well, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. My father had a laying on of hands ministry. In order for him uh, to, to minister in the way God called him, he had to get his hands upon you. God used his hands. The anointing of God would flow down his right shoulder. And here's a woman who was in those services. She knows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, the, the power of God would flow down his right arm into his right hand. And he would not go into a service until he felt that power coming down his arm. And I can remember many times as a boy, 
at the hotel getting ready to go to the service. And our driver would come and knock on the door, say, Brother Roberts, it's time to go. And he would say, I can't go yet. I have not yet felt that anointing. And he would say, thousands of people are depending upon my prayers tonight, and I must have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And so I learned as a child that he would not go to a service until he felt that tangible presence come into his arm and into his hand. Now that's the atmosphere that I grew up under. I grew up under a laying on of hands ministry. But when, when I was prophesied over in 77, and you mentioned it tonight back in the back room, when Vicki Jameson, my longtime friend, when she prophesied over me in 1977 that I would enter the healing ministry, and she said to me, and we were live on the air on television that day, she said, you're going to have a different kind of healing ministry than your father had. She said, your, your ministry will not be particularly a laying on of hands ministry, although from time to time you will lay hands on people. But she said, particularly, you will operate in the word of knowledge and you will stand and pray and not touch anyone and people will be healed. Well, several years later, that came into pass. That came to pass. In 1980, miracles began to happen in my ministry. And everywhere I have been since then, since 1980, someone's been healed in every service, wherever I have been. Well, I've operated in, in particularly in the word of knowledge. But on this night, two weeks ago, something changed. And when I got back home after the service, I was praying. And the Lord spoke to me. And said, did you notice that I did not give you many words of knowledge tonight? And I thought back into the service and I remember that he only gave me three or four words of knowledge, which really, for me, is a small number. Oftentimes in a service, I'll get many as 20 or 30 or 40 words of knowledge. And people will respond and be healed and they'll testify. And I said, yes, Lord, I noticed you only gave me a few. He said, but did you notice that you acted out what you saw or what you heard your wife say she saw in her dream? I said, yes. I stood on the platform just like she saw in the dream, held out my hands and prayed. And people by the hundreds got healed. And the Lord said to me, that was an operation of the gifts of healing. And he said, I'm going to manifest that through your life beginning now. And wherever I have been in the last two weeks, the several times that I have preached since then, since that conference, it has happened. Wow. It happened again this morning. And I just, I just want to thank God because it's going to happen again tonight. Amen. Punch your neighbor and say, it's going to happen tonight. Punch him on. Put a good elbow in their arm. Tell them, it's going to happen tonight. Now, in order, in order for this to happen, I, I want to do something that I have done all over the world. And I hope you're not in a hurry. I'll be done by midnight, I promise. Because <laughs> i got to fly out in the morning, so by midnight would be a good time to quit. Um, you think I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> but I want to do something because it irritates me. Any of you ever get irritated? Any of you ever get angry? You ever got angry? Have you ever had to repent because you got angry? Uh, I get angry at some Christians because they seem to be ashamed of a healing Jesus. They don't want to be intimidated. They, they don't want to be uh, ostracized. They don't want to be criticized. They want to just come to church and hear a good sermon and shake the pastor's hands and pray for a few minutes and go home and absolve their conscience. But the Bible says, you shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Now, maybe I'm reading the Bible wrong. I don't think it says just your pastor. Just the evangelist, just the pastor's wife will lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. It says you. And people will say, well, I'm not one of the 12 disciples. No, you're not. And neither am I. But I got news. They're dead. And they're not coming back. And John's gospel tells us that you and I are disciples. 
If we follow in his word, then we are his disciples. So that word about laying hands on the sick is directed directly toward you. Amen. You shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Most Christians wait for the evangelist or for the pastor or for someone special to come in who has a particular anointing for the healing ministry. Someone who lives it, breathes it every day. Someone like me. I've lived the healing ministry since 1980, since it came into my life. And that's the wrong thing to do. You are shirking your own responsibility. And so tonight, I'm going to teach you how to lay hands upon the sick. And I'm going to help you get rid of the intimidation factor. So that you'll never, ever, ever again be intimidated by laying hands upon the sick. Because it's not very difficult to lay hands on someone and pray. It's the idea of it. Well, what will I do if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't work? Well, what if it does? What have you got to lose? You've got nothing to lose and you have everything to gain. Do you think they're going to get sicker if you touch them? I want to teach you, to demonstrate to you how to lay hands upon the sick. Laying hands upon the sick is not difficult. It's a question of just doing it. When Kenneth Copeland was a part of our ministry back in the late 1960s, as a co-pilot on our airplane and driving my dad to the crusade services and, and preparing the people for the healing line, my father taught him what he taught me. Don't lay hands on someone until you are ready to release your faith. Think of a mechanic with a wrench in his hand. And he puts a bolt on. He doesn't stand back and admire the bolt. He puts the wrench on it when he's ready to turn it. And Kenneth said, Oral Roberts uses his faith like a mechanic uses a wrench. He doesn't turn the wrench until he's ready. And when you pray for someone, you don't touch them until you're ready to release your faith. Because the person who you're praying for is looking up to your prayers. Now, I used to think, well, to pray for someone, you have to kind of step back and, and, you know, get a good running start. You have to get yourself prepared, and then you, you, you get up, and then you, you leap. <laughs> That's not what you have to do at all. Stand up for a minute. If he were in need of prayer and he were to ask me to lay hands on him, I would say something like this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon my brother. And as I do, I release my faith for a healing from the crown of his head unto the soles of his feet. Satan, you take your hands off of him in the name of Jesus. And I believe God for a miracle. Now, one thing I would never say to him, I would never say, well, you must not have had any faith. <laughs> Trying to absolve myself of the responsibility. I would never say that because I would be lying because God has given you faith. He says, he says in the Bible that he gave everybody the measure of faith. Not a measure, but the measure. So you have faith in you. You couldn't get up in the morning if you didn't have faith. You wouldn't get out of bed unless you knew you had faith. You wouldn't get in your car you wouldn't get on a, on a bus, on a, in a train, in an airplane, unless you had faith. You wouldn't drive in Houston traffic without faith. <laughs> you have faith. So who would I be to tell you that you must not have had any faith? Or your faith's not working? No, that's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to say, I've set my faith with you in Jesus' name. I'm not coming out of this prayer of agreement. I'm believing with you for your healing to manifest. Amen. Okay, thanks. Now, everybody stand up. Pair up in groups of two. Pair up in groups of two. Not three, but two. Find somebody. You may know them. You may not know them. Pair up in groups of two and face one another. Put your hands out, but don't 
touch them until I say so. Don't touch them. Sister Pigeon, let him go. (laughs) Don't touch them. Now, here's what I want you to do. When I count to three, I want you to lay hands on them, and I want you to begin to pray. Now, you don't have to use these exact words, okay? But something like this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on this man or woman, and I release my faith, and I pray for a healing to begin. All right? Now, you don't have to use those exact words. Remember when Jesus taught us the Lord's Prayer, he said, pray after this fashion. You don't have to use those exact words, but after this fashion, pray. Okay? So when I count to three, I want you to touch them, and I want you to pray. Are you ready? On three. One, two, three. Do it. That's it. I lay my hands on you. I rebuke this satanic attack. In the name of Jesus, come out. Satan, take your hands off this man, this woman. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on you. I release my faith for a miracle. In Jesus' name, amen. Now you can stop. Now look back this way. It's not the length of your prayer. You may pray 10 seconds. You may pray a minute. It's not the length of your prayer. Well, if I pray longer, it'll work. No. Peter prayed a three-word prayer. Lord, save me. That's all he had time for. He would have drowned if he prayed any longer. It's not the length of your prayer. But your intensity has something to do with it. Because that's your faith. Now, find somebody else. Somebody else. A group of two now. Now, don't touch them. Don't touch them. I know you've been wanting to touch them, but don't touch them. Don't touch them. Not until I count to three. Are you ready? Same thing. One, two, three. Lay hands on them. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on this man, this woman. Be healed. In the authority of Jesus' name. There's a cataract dissolving right now. Someone's cataract is dissolving. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I release my faith for a healing. Amen. Now, turn back this way. Now, before you sit down, how many of you can say, when someone just laid hands on me, I felt the power of God? Put your hand up. Hold it up high. Now look around. Look how many hands are up. Now, everybody lift both hands. Pray this out loud after me. Father, Father, in Jesus' name, name, never again again, will I be intimidated to to lay hands on someone and pray the prayer of faith. faith. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You'll never be intimidated again. Starting is what's difficult. But now you've done it several times. You know they're not going to bite. Okay? Now, there are times when it's not appropriate or when it might not be accepted to lay hands on someone. Where you know they might not receive it or the atmosphere is not right for it or, or there's some circumstance that would prevent you from touching them. Well, there's another method. And Jesus demonstrated that with the Roman centurion. When he came to him and said, my military aid is grievously tormented with paralysis. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him, which indicates that Jesus was willing to walk up the seacoast to where the Roman garrison was stationed in the Tiberias area and lay his hands on him. But the centurion said, it's not necessary for you to come. For I am also a man under authority, and I speak to my soldiers and tell them to go and they go, come and they come, or do this and they do it. But I recognize, Jesus, that you have authority above all authority. You don't have to come and lay your hands on him. You just send the word. And my aid will be healed. Well, Jesus marveled. He said, I've not seen such great faith. And he spoke the word. He said, go your way. And as you have believed, it shall be done to him. And when he got about halfway home, he met people from the garrison who said about the same time, your military aid was healed. Now, the Bible says in Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent his word and healed them. 
there are some times when it's not appropriate or it might not be accepted or received when you touch someone. So what do you do instead? You send the word. Stand up again. Find somebody else that you didn't pray for before. Groups of two again. Do not touch them. No touchy. Do not touch them. No touching allowed. You're going to pray the same way. The difference is you're not going to touch them this time. You're going to send the word. You're not going to touch them. Because there are times when it might not be received. Or it might be an inappropriate time. But you have another method. It's not any better. It's not any worse. It's just different. So we're going to, we're going to pray the same prayer, the same way, but you're not going to touch them. You're going to send the word. Because the Bible says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So are you ready to pray? Just this time, do not touch them. Are you ready? One, two, three. Begin to pray. Same prayer. Same thought. Same idea. Same faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, I send the word to this man, this woman, right now. I send the word to them for healing. Healing in spirit. Healing in mind. Healing in body, healing in family, healing in finances, healing, healing, healing. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, turn back this way. Now, how many can say just now when someone just spoke the word toward me, I felt, I felt the power of God come on me. Put your hand up. Hold, hold high. Now, find somebody else. Find somebody else. Let's brad this nail on the other side. Somebody else. Get ready. Do not touch them. No touching. You're in the no touch zone. Are you ready? On three. One, two, three. Begin. Father, I send the word. I pray the prayer of faith and I send the word. For healing for strength, for wholeness, for victory, for a miracle. Every sickness, every disease, come out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now turn back this way. Remember, it's not the length of your prayer. Now who can say, just as someone sent the word, I felt the power of God. Hold your hand up. Look at how many more hands this time. Look. Now, everybody raise both hands. Say, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, never again again will I be intimidated intimidated to lay hands on someone and pray pray or to send the word and pray. Because I recognize that I am not the healer. The responsibility is not mine. My job is to pray. It's God's job to heal. Now, give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Okay, you can be seated. These are principles that you learn about the healing ministry. Someone has damaged your, uh, your right arm. You've damaged your right arm and you have pain. Where are you? You've damaged your right arm. Where are you? Where's that person? Is that you? Well, you're getting the whole healing tonight, aren't you? Yeah. In Jesus' name. Looser in the name of Jesus. Mm. All this come out. Amen. Now you're going to be able to move that without any. Is it this arm? Just move yeah. it. Just, just do whatever you could not do. Whatever you could not do, move it. No. Praise God. Someone else? Is it your right arm? Yeah. How'd you hurt it? It hurts when you lay on it? I got news for you. Don't lay on it. Loose it in the name of Jesus. Now just move it. You're going, to find, you're going to find you have complete freedom of moving in it. Got it? Now, don't lay on it. That's not a word of knowledge. Just don't lay on it. Lay on the other side for a while. Loose it in the name of Jesus. I send the word to your arm right now. Now just move it. Yeah, just move it now. You're going to find the pains leaving you right now. Now see, there's a demonstration. I laid hands on her. I laid hands on her, but I sent the word to her. You see? These are different methods. This is not rocket science. Okay? You don't have to be working out here at NASA to understand this. Okay? It's simple. 
but we trip over it because we get intimidated. And we wonder what somebody might think. Why would you care what some people think? I couldn't care less what they think. That's why my wife will not go with me to Walmart. Because she knows I'm liable to have a healing line in the vegetables. I've been in Walmart where I had a head of lettuce under both arms praying for people. You know? So I don't care. I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care what the... I don't care what they think. Somebody asked me to pray for them in Walmart. I'm going to pray for them. And I'm not going to whisper, okay? I don't care what the devil thinks. Amen. You know, I just don't care. But she won't go with me to Walmart. All right, now, there are other methods. Not better, not worse, they're just different. One of them is, uh, is uh, prayer cloths. The Bible says in the book of Acts that the apostle Paul took handkerchiefs and aprons, and if you translate that, it's cloths. He took cloths from his body, and they were sent to the sick, and the sick were healed, and the Bible also says the demonic spirits were driven out. Now, how can a cloth send out uh, healing? Well, you have to understand it's not the cloth. It's the one of whom the cloth is symbolic. Paul took handkerchiefs and aprons or cloths that apparently he had on his person. Perhaps they were inside his garment. Perhaps they were wrapped around his belt. I don't know. But it said they came from his body. The most important thing is he had touched them. He had touched them. And the cloth became a point of contact to help people to release their faith. Now, you and I know that cloths do not heal. Jesus is the healer, but the cloth points you to the one who is the healer. Now, cloths are interesting uh, fabric. Um, I'm sweating a little bit tonight because I'm moving around and I can, I, can feel, I can feel a little wetness here on my neck and on the back of my neck. If I were to take this cloth and I were to rub it on the back of my neck right here and get that little drop of sweat back there, I could take this cloth to the Houston Police Department and they would be able to run a DNA check. And you give them a little time and they'll find out that the DNA on this cloth belongs to me. Well, I have news for you. When you lay your hand upon a cloth and send it to someone, your spiritual DNA is going into this cloth. I'll tell you a funny story, Pastor. Uh, It must have been 20 years ago. My dad uh, had a big polyp that was up inside his nose. And one of the doctors at the City of Faith went up in there surgically to remove the polyp. And afterwards, they they got the polyp out, but they couldn't get his nose to stop bleeding. And he was was under the anesthetic, but he was bleeding profusely, and they couldn't get it to stop, and my mother was there. And she reached into her purse and said, here is one of Oral's uh, prayer cloths. She said, stick it up his nose. And the doctor did, and the bleeding stopped. (laughs) Now, it wasn't the cloth. It wasn't the cloth. It was symbolic of the one who the cloth represented. The cloth represented the name of Jesus. But it's just an ordinary piece. This is my handkerchief. Just an ordinary piece of cloth. There's, There's nothing special about this cloth. It's been in my pocket. It came out of the washing machine and the dryer. There's nothing special about this cloth, but it now has my spiritual DNA in it. And when this cloth is laid upon the sick, it becomes dangerous to the devil. Because this cloth contains my prayers. I have sent out millions of prayer cloths 
I would get them uh, and, and I'd lay my hands on every one of them and send them out all over the world. And the testimonies would come from everywhere of people who used the prayer cloth as a point of contact. Not as magic. And not that the cloth heals. But as a point of contact to help people to release their faith. Mamas, grandmamas get a hold of these cloths to put them in their children's lunch pails. They put them in their, uh, they sew them into their children's pillowcases, sew them into blankets, put them underneath the floorboards of their car, under their floor mats, put them in their purses, put them in their wallets. My wife has a prayer cloth on her body at all times. She keeps them in her bra. (laughs) At any given moment, my wife can pull out a prayer cloth because she knows it's a powerful point of contact. But it's just a cloth. The cloth doesn't heal. But it's who the cloth represents. Now, another powerful point of contact is anointing oil. We just had a a big uh, oil service on our television program uh, back in January. And we... We, uh, I sent out a letter to all of our friends and partners around the world, and I explained to them how anointing oil was used throughout the Word of God. And you'll find anointing oil all throughout the Bible. Anointing oil is something that's very special because of who it signifies. It's not because the oil is special, but it's because of who it symbolizes. All throughout the Word of God, you'll find the use of anointing oil. Samuel used the anointing oil to anoint Saul to become the first king of Israel. He also used oil to anoint David to be the second king. You'll you'll find anointing oil. In James chapter 5, the Bible says, anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. But it's just oil. There's nothing special about the oil. Now, I realize that there are some people who believe that it will work better if it is a certain type of oil. If it's come from Israel. If it's oil that is near uh, an olive tree, from an olive tree near the garden of Gethsemane. There are people who say, well, if it's a certain type of spice or smell to the oil, it, you know, it'll work better. That's not true. You can use 10W30. (laughs) It's just oil. There's no power in the oil. The oil is just a symbol of the healing power of God. Now, when our children were little, we have three daughters, and uh, when they were little, we would anoint them with oil every night before they went to sleep. And if we should forget, they would call to us, anoint, 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 and we knew what they meant. We'd come upstairs to their bedrooms, and we'd have a little oil. Uh, Lindsay would always have some type of oil in the house, uh, cooking oil, spray oil, coconut oil, olive oil, whatever she had. And we would take a little bit, put it on our hands, and we'd walk to their bedrooms, and we'd just anoint them like that with oil. Sometimes I I couldn't find any oil, but I knew there was oil in my skin. And so I'd walk up to their rooms, and I'd (laughs) say, I anoint you. Because it's just oil. There's nothing special about oil. Oil is just a symbol of the power of God. I remember years ago, My father and I wrote a letter to our partners. Oh, I'll get back to that story I didn't finish in a minute. Uh, uh, We sent out a letter, uh, and we sent a little vial of oil. And there was a little boy over in Little Rock, Arkansas, who who was born deaf in one ear. And he came home from school, and his mother had left my dad's and my letter on the table with the little vial of oil. And he picked up the letter and read it, and took the oil and poured it into his ear. And God healed him. His ear began to hear. He was nine or ten years old. He never heard out of that ear. And God healed him. The oil did not do the healing. It was a powerful point of contact. But getting back to what I was saying, back last month we had a special, what we call a blended oil prayer service. I had sent out a letter and I had explained about the use of anointing oil throughout the word of God. And then I sent a vial of oil to all of our friends and partners, and I said, don't open it. Just lay your hands on it and pray and mail it back to me. I said, I'm going to take the oil from people all over the world, and we're going to empty it out into a big vessel, 
I'm going to put my hands into it, mix it, blend it together, put my hands in it, pray the prayer of faith, then I'm going to re-bottle it and send it back so that the prayers of all the other people are with it. And I'm in the process of doing that right now. And we're already beginning to get testimonies from people who have used that anointing oil, which has come from people all over the world, all blended together. I believe in using anointing oil. Is any sick among you, James 5 says. Let them anoint them with oil. Call on the elders. Anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick person. And the Lord will raise you up. I believe in these points of contact. Now, these things aren't sacred. They're just instruments. They don't do the healing, but they help point you to the one who does. Can you say amen? amen. Possibly one of the most powerful points of contact is praying one for another. Now, we laid hands on one another earlier, and we sent the word but there is something special about praying one for another. Would you stand up one more time? And this time, not groups of two or three, but groups of three or four or five. Just kind of join in a little circle right there where you are. And let's just act out the Bible tonight. Let's pray the prayer of faith. Pray one for another, the scripture says, that you may be healed. There was a woman who worked in our ministry some years ago who came down with cancer. The doctor said, you have six months to live. And she retired, and, and the Lord spoke to her and said, I want you to find every person in the city that you can who has cancer. And I want you to go and lay your hands on them and pray. And she did for several months as she was able Six months later, she went back to the doctor, and the doctor declared her cancer-free. She came back to work out of retirement and worked for a number of years until she went home to be with the Lord. That was a powerful point of contact, her praying one for another. I want you to pray one for another right now. Begin to pray. Kibro ishfrakasa. Father, we pray the prayer of faith over this man, over this woman, over this young person. I speak the word of healing. I send it to you in the name of Jesus. And as I pray this prayer, this prayer of faith, I believe that this prayer of faith will come back in the form of my healing. I pray for their healing so that that healing can also come back to me in the name of Jesus. I pray this, I believe, and I expect a miracle in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Now come back to your seat. Who can say, I felt the power of God just now as someone was praying over me? Let me see your hands. Now, is there someone here tonight who has particular pain in your back and you need prayer? Would you stand up? Someone who has particular pain in your shoulders or your feet or your legs, would you stand up? Or your hips or your knees, would you stand up, please? I'm going to do what my wife saw in her dream. I'm going to stand here and the gifts of healing are going to begin to flow as I pray. And when I do, people are going to begin to receive healing. If you have any type of arthritis, or any bone or muscular problem and you need prayer, stand up please. From your head to your feet. It may be your back, a disc, a vertebra. It may be your hips or your knees or your ankles. It may be your shoulder or your elbow or your arm. It may be your neck. It may be in some other area of your body where you have pain. I am against pain. I hate pain. I don't know anyone who says, oh, hallelujah, I've got pain. I've never heard anyone say, I'm giving glory to God for pain. I don't want pain. I don't like pain. I want to get rid of pain. Anybody want to get rid of pain? When you stand up, when you sit down, when you go to bed, when you get out of bed, you know. So uh, somebody who is sitting, now reach out and touch that one who is standing. Father, 
It is not by might, nor is it by power, but it is by the Spirit of the Lord that I stretch forth my hands tonight and pray the prayer of faith. I speak now, now here comes healing, it's already beginning. I speak now the word of healing to every bone, every muscle, anything and everything that has atrophied or is not working properly. I speak to backs and to discs and to vertebra, be healed in the name of Jesus. I speak to shoulders that are in pain. I command the pain to stop. I arrest it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the pain in the neck. I rebuke the pain in the shoulders, in the back, the disc, the vertebra. I rebuke the pain in the hips, in the knees, the swelling, the stiffness. I rebuke the pain that goes down the leg and down the arm. I rebuke the pain in the ankle and the feet and the knees. In the name of Jesus, every arthritic pain or injury-related pain, come out now. I take hold of it with my faith and pull it out. I pull it out. I pull it out in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and begin to give him praise tonight. Begin to give him praise tonight. You may be able to move your leg right now without pain. You may be able to move your arm and your shoulders. You may be able to bend. You may be able to twist. You may be able to move your neck without it grating. You may be able to move your shoulder. Just examine yourself. See what you can do. Who's feeling the touch of God already? Wave your hand at me. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look how many hands. That's what I call wholesale healing. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody give praise to the Lord. That's healing. Now, let me ask you this question. How hard was that? Don't look at me like I'm doing anything special. I'm just standing here praying. I'm talking to the same Jesus that you're talking to. I don't have any more faith than you have. I'm just going to use mine. And I'm going to believe God. And I'm not going to take no for an answer. Well, Richard, what do you do when it looks like nothing happened? I always say, look, I'm standing with you in faith. I'm not coming out of this prayer of agreement. We have prayed. We have believed. Now I am expecting a miracle. You know, it didn't look like anything happened when Jesus cursed the fig tree. Something was happening on the inside that couldn't be seen on the outside. You see, we're not in charge of that agenda. Our, our, our charge is to pray. And the next day, Jesus said, look, Jesus, the, the, the tree that you cursed yesterday has withered up from the roots. And Jesus said, have faith in God. Or in other words, have the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe the things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. And what things soever you desire when you pray, believe. Amen. Now that's when you believe is when you pray. That's not how many Christians pray. Many Christians pray and they wait a few days and decide whether or not they're going to believe. Instead, they pray and they wonder. Remember that old Christmas song, I wonder as I wonder? I hate that song, you know. Why would you pray and then wonder as you wonder? He said, when you pray, believe. Right in the middle of your prayer, that's when you believe. You pray right then. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. Right in the middle of your prayer, that's when you believe. Yes. What things ever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. That's how my wife and I received the healing ministry that we have. We took that scripture, Mark eleven twenty four, and we quoted it day after day after day. We didn't tell anybody about it. I didn't tell my dad. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't announce it on television. I quoted it every day. I confessed it. I said, it's mine. I have a healing ministry. Nobody was getting healed, but I had it by faith. And months passed and months passed and suddenly one day it broke loose and people began to get healed wherever I went. Because I appropriated that scripture. That scripture is mine. Turn to your neighbor and say that scripture is mine. Well, you've got just as much right to it as I do. 
It's only not yours because you haven't taken it. The Bible says the violent take it by force. And I'm not talking about physical force. I'm talking about the force of your faith. I say that healing is mine. And the devil isn't going to take it away. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Now, who has a need of healing in your heart? Heart Heart-related situations, stand up. Blood pressure situation, stand up. Blood pressure situation. Blood sugar, stand up. Diabetes, hypoglycemia. A valve-related problem, an artery-related problem, a blood disorder of some type. Something in your stomach, in one of your vital organs, your kidney, your liver, your colon, your gallbladder, your pancreas, your intestines, whatever like that. Your breathing, anyone with a breathing condition, allergies, emphysema, COPD, whatever the breathing situation is, a, a, a problem with your breathing, pulmonary, in the name of Jesus, hypertension, anything like that, you need prayer. Stand up on your feet. Cancer, a tumor, a mass, a growth. Or you, or you want to stand in proxy for someone that you know. If that's you, stand up. I hate cancer with a passion. God anoint every researcher right now who's doing everything in his or her power to discover cures for cancer. God anoint them. Thank God for doctors. Thank God for the prayer of faith. Thank God most of all for when they're working together. The prayer and the good work of the doctor. We give praise to God for that. Hallelujah. Now someone who's sitting, touch the ones who are standing. If you can, look like just about everybody's standing. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke, yes, I'll do that. I rebuke the migraine headache. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I'm going to stretch my hands out and do exactly what my wife said she saw in her dream. In the name of Jesus, I speak to cancer. You foul, tormenting cancer. Cancer in the blood, come out. Cancer in the brain, come out. Cancer in the breast, come out. Cancer in the skin, come out. Cancer in the bone, come out. Cancer in the organ, come out. In the name of Jesus, every tumor, every mass, every growth, dissolve right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for healing the heart. Heart beat normally. Heart muscle be healed. Aorta be healed. Valve be healed. Be healed of the irregular beating. Be healed of of the fibrillation problem. Be healed. Every artery open up so that the blood may flow unrestricted. Carotid arteries open up. In the name of Jesus, every artery, every vein, every capillary, may the blood flow unrestricted from your head to your feet. I send the word to you tonight for healing, 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 healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for healing. Thank you, Father. Diverticulitis, come out in the name of Jesus. Colon, function properly. I rebuke the colitis, come out in the name of Jesus. Pancreas and liver and uh, kidney function be normal. Your body to produce uh, the, the right level of insulin, not, the, not, not too short, not too much, but the right level of insulin. I rebuke the diabetes. I rebuke the hypoglycemia. Be healed. May your blood sugar regulate, blood pressure be healed. That which is too high, come down. That which is too low, come up in the name of Jesus. Hypertension, come out. I'm adding vision and hearing. Anyone with a vision problem or hearing problem and you need prayer, stand up. I rebuke the breathing problem, the emphysema, the asthma, the uh, COPD. I rebuke that. I rebuke the blindness, the glaucoma, the cataract. Come out. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the loss of hearing. 
and I rebuke pain. Every pain come out in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the disorientation. The disorientation. I rebuke the disorientation and the dizziness and the equilibrium, the balance problem. Come out in the name of Jesus. Even fibroids come out in the name of Jesus. Even growths and warts come off in the name of Jesus. I pray over you tonight from the crown of your head even unto the soles of your feet. I command the devil to take his dirty, rotten, stinking, filthy hands off of you. I pray for you to be healed for the healing to begin tonight in the name of Jesus. Everyone standing please. Everyone standing please. Lift your hands unto the Lord and begin to receive it. Say, Lord, I, I receive. I receive. I receive. Say, Lord, I receive this. I receive it. I receive my healing. I receive from you. I receive. Oh, Father, I receive tonight. I receive. I receive. I receive from you, Father. I receive. I receive your touch. I receive your touch in my head. I receive your touch in my chest. I receive your touch in my belly. I receive your touch in my legs, my feet, my shoulders, my back, my hips. I receive, uh, I receive your touch in my neck in every area. I receive your touch in every organ of my body. I receive healing tonight. I receive it. It's mine. I claim it. I receive the prayer of faith and I declare that from this night forward, I shall not be the same again. Hallelujah. Now give praise unto the Lord tonight. Give praise unto him. Hallelujah. Now, how many of you can say, I felt the touch of God tonight. I feel different. I feel different. I feel different. I feel healing. I feel healing. Wave your hand at me if you feel healing. Now, to see your hands worth my whole trip to Houston. It's worth my whole time here in Houston to see healing. I keep hearing the Lord say, wholesale healing. Everybody likes wholesale. Nobody wants to pay retail. I see wholesale healing. Turn to your neighbor and say, wholesale healing. Come on, give a shout of praise to the Lord. Now raise your hands. Say, Father, Father tonight, tonight I have been taught, have been taught principles, of healing. principles of healing. Principles, principles which I'm going to follow through with for the rest of my life. Of my life. I'll never be intimidated, never be intimidated to, lay to lay hands on someone and pray the prayer of faith the prayer of faith. or to send the word or to, the word, or to use a prayer cloth or, prayer cloth, or anointing oil or any other method that the Holy Spirit shows me. I will be bold. I will be strong. I will use what you've given me. And that's the name of Jesus. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. You can be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> you receive that? Absolutely. Did you get something out of that? Yes, sir. That's the best teaching I've got. Amen. Remember when the Apostle Paul said, I deliver that which was delivered unto me? Amen. I have just delivered you the healing ministry. Amen. It's not rocket science. All it takes is someone who's willing. Hallelujah. Are you willing? And you know what? The more willing you become, the more doors will open. And God will make a way in the lives of people who need prayer that you may be the only one they'll receive. So many times God has opened doors for me to minister to someone that I never thought possible. I've had so many opportunities to minister to professional athletes, to politicians, government leaders, business leaders, because God opened a door, and when he opened it, I stepped in. Amen. You know, someone can open a door for you, but you have to walk through. And I've been willing to walk through that door. You know, I can only think of one time in my whole life that someone did not receive my prayer. 
One woman, the only one I ever remember who declined prayer. When I go to a hospital to pray for someone, the word usually circulates. And a few minutes later, I'm stopped in the hallways to go into other rooms and pray for people. Because when people look at me and look at our family, they think of healing. That's what our family has stood for for all these years. And it's such an honor. Only one time in all the years I've prayed for the sick, including all the years with my father, only one time have I ever been turned down for healing prayer. Well, that's a pretty good average. (laughs) That woman had cancer and she had decided she wanted to die. And you know, if you decide you want to die, you can die. And that's what she wanted, and I let her alone. But only one time in my whole life. And the reason, I think, is because inside of everyone, there is a vacuum for healing. Everyone wants to be well. I don't know anyone who wants to be sick. There's something about us human beings. When sickness strikes, we want to get well. And I've had the hardest of sinners come to me for prayer. So many times in crusades around the world, uh, I have prayed for the sick before I gave an altar call. And I'll look down and I'll see many who testified of healings coming forward to give their hearts to Christ. Healing is like a dinner bell. And when you ring it, people come forward to give their hearts to Christ. Because when you see a miracle, it'll change you. I remember once I was in Niger in West Africa, and it's a, it's a nation that was a, a French colony, and their national language is still French, although they have their African dialects. And I was invited uh, to the office of the Muslim president. The country is 98% Muslim. And at that time, there were only 5,000 known Christians in the whole nation of 12 million people. And because I offered to bring doctors and nurses and medicines and food. The government allowed us to come in. It was the first time in the history of Niger that anyone has been allowed to come in with a healing crusade. And I was invited to come to the office of the president, who is a Muslim. And I came into the office, and he was speaking in French, And there was an interpreter there, and my group, all of our doctors went with me and our nurses. We had about four, five, six doctors, I guess, and we had 12 nurses, and all of our staff, there were about 20 of us in the president's office, and we talked for a while, and I shared with him the vision that I had for his nation for healing. And when the meeting was over, uh, I shook his hand, and I turned to leave. And through the interpreter, he said, Dr. Roberts, would you please remain? You others, would you step outside? And I wondered what he was doing because I didn't speak French and I didn't think he spoke English. But when they all left the room, including the interpreter, he began speaking in perfect English. He said, Dr. Roberts, you know I'm a Muslim. I said, yes, sir, I do. He said, my wife has had a stroke. Would you go to my home and would you get up on the bed and lay your hands upon my wife? for healing. Now, this is a Muslim president. And I got in the presidential limousine and went to the residence and got up into the bed of the bedroom of the president of the nation and laid hands on his wife and then his daughter for healing. If you make yourself available, God will make a way. And the Muslim mullahs were on the radios saying, do not go to the Richard Roberts crusade. There will be no miracles. The first night of the crusade, there were nine blind people that were healed. And the second night, there were seven people totally deaf that were healed. And the Muslim mullahs stopped talking against me. And there were 30 to 35,000 people per night who came to the crusade. And that week, 35,000 gave their hearts to Jesus Christ. Because I was willing to step through the door that God gave me. And our doctors gave out tons of medicines and did surgery, including cataract surgery. 
And we gave out a quarter of a million meals to hungry children. And we touched the nation because I was willing to walk through the door. I am not intimidated. I am not ashamed. And I'm not afraid. Somebody give glory to God. Well, is it midnight? No, it's not quite midnight yet. Uh, I, where's the lobby? There. I have some books out there in the lobby. I brought some resources uh, with me. And uh, I will be honored to autograph them for you if you'd like to purchase them. They're just $10 each. Here is a book that I brought called He's a Healing Jesus, which sums up the healing ministry. And this is a little girl that was deaf, that was healed in my uh, Ivory Coast crusade. She was born deaf and God healed her. And I picked her up in my arms and somebody took a picture of it and my wife said, that's your book cover. So that, this book is available out there. And then here's a book that I wrote called When All Hell Breaks Loose. And a woman wrote and said, I want that what the hell do I do book. <laughs> well, I think I know what she meant. That's available. And then my newest book, which... Uh, is available is Your Road to a Better Life. It is a 13-week series of how to live as a Christian, spiritual, physical, financial, every area of your life. They're only $10 each. I will autograph them if you'd like me to, and I will see you out in the lobby. God bless you, Pastor. I'm Amen. turning it back to you. Hallelujah. And as I do, I'm giving this book to you, and I'm giving this book to you. Thank you, Lord. And I'm giving this book to you. Amen. You're you. welcome. Thank you. I'm going to ask Brother Richard to, uh, we have six healing cloths. I just felt like the Lord said there's six people here that need to do what he taught us tonight. But it's only the six people that know that when he prays over them and you send it or you take it to that person, that they are healed, not maybe, not, not wishing, not hoping. You're going to get this and say, I know the power that's in the, in the prayer, in my prayer, uh, to, to send that. So there's six people here. I'll just leave them up here. Brother Richard's praying over them. At the end of the service, you come up and get one. And what you're saying is they're healed in Jesus' name. Amen. There they are. Amen. Brother Jack. Praise God.